Hey everyone, just like Batman had a utility belt that got him out of all sorts of binds, you two will need something similar to get you out of all the things that will be thrown at you as a video creator. What I want to show you today is the kit that comes with me on just about every single job. Now, if you are a filmmaker, you're going to know that every job within filmmaking comes with its own kit. So if I was an electrician or a gaffer, I would have a kit that would reflect the fact that I'm working with electricity and lighting and frames and things like that. Um, if I am a first camera assistant, I'm going to have a kit essentially that reflects the fact that I'm doing a lot of things with the camera. This kit that I have here basically steals a little bit from all of those kits. This is just my kit, what works for me. There's still a lot of things that I endeavor to add to this kit, but functionally it does 90% of what I need it to do. So you just need to adapt to your particular situation. Um, and this also doesn't include the stuff that goes with my camera. There are things like uh, articulating arms and all sorts of different types of cages and rigging that I have that lives with my camera that isn't in this this kit. This is just sort of my general toolkit. So without further ado, let's break into it. Okay, the first thing up is this field pouch from Peak Designs. Uh, I had something similar to this before uh, that was sort of like a fanny pack. I kind of liked it, but this is definitely a lot better. This was kindly gifted to me by the fine folks at Panasonic, but uh, we sell it at Viztech and it's super, super awesome for what it does. Um, this is something you're going to keep on you while you're shooting, so you don't have to keep running back and forth looking for all the things you need quick access to. Uh, and it just basically uh, loops your belt through here so you can have it attached to you, which is my preferred method. Uh, if I'm standing at my tripod all day, I will just clip this to my tripod. Um, but basically, if I open it up, you're going to have all your essentials in here that you're going to need. Um, I've got basically lens and camera cleaning stuff. Uh, so I've got my blower, I've got my uh, solution, I've got my uh, Roscoe lens tissue here, then I have my media here, so all my SD cards or my uh, CF cards. Uh, another super important thing is food. Uh, if you are shooting for a long period of time, uh, once you start to lose nutrition, uh, your brain starts to go a little soft. So it's super important to always have some type of snack in here to keep you going because if you are well fed, you're going to be sharp and you're going to be able to uh, think properly. Then I have my filter packs in here. So if I I need to swap out if I'm using external filters. Um, I have my ND filters in here or any other things that I need like glimmer glass or whatever. The next thing in my kit is the X-Rite color checker. Super, super handy thing to have. This helps me achieve a very accurate white balance but also gives me on the other side a chip chart or what's called a Macbeth chart and this helps me uh, sort of align the color on many different cameras or speed up my color grading. Super handy to have. Everyone should have one of these in their kit. Even if you're a photographer, they're very helpful. Um, and then the last couple things in here is going to be batteries. So right now I've got a couple of LPE6 batteries in here uh, and then a multi-tool. So just got a couple of screwdrivers on here, uh, a couple of knives, things like that. Uh, just are handy for rigging or fixing or whatever you need these things for. And that's effectively it that all goes in this little kit. So let's move on to the big gig bag now. Okay, so here's my kit bag. Um, this is all the tools and the, the bigger items that I need on a regular basis. Uh, I've just gone to a hardware store and gotten a tool bag. Uh, there are Cine models that kind of do something similar, although they're mostly made to put cameras and accessories in. Um, so I typically find that a hardware bag is still among the better choices. Um, so I'm just going to take you, give you a quick tour of, of what we find. On the outside are the things that I know I need quick access to all the time. Um, um, and that's going to be things like screwdrivers for putting on plates or doing anything like that, uh, vice grips, pliers, um, I've got the small sort of uh, eyeglass screws, things like that. I've got a level um, for just leveling out small dolly track, uh, things like that. Um, I've got dry erase markers here. I've got Sharpie markers if you need. On this side I have a, <laughs> a little worse for wear but this is basically an emergency blanket um, and one of the great uses of emergency blankets is uh, you want to protect your camera from overheating or from the elements if it's raining anything like that and so if we're out in the elements and something unexpected happens or we're in a super hot environment I can put this on top of my camera and just sort of protect it a little bit from those elements um, and myself if anything happens and you just need an emergency blanket well, you got one there, just in case. I've got some more power bars in the pocket there. Always very helpful to have. Pens. Um, and then I've got a remote here. This is for LED Go lights. This is just a Wi-Fi remote that I can control the lights. I do find that it works on a lot of other brands too. Um, so super helpful to have. Um, and so I keep it on 
in my kit because depending on where I'm going, whether I'm using my own kit or not, sometimes I find that it still does work with other people's kits, so it's always handy to have there. All right, so let's dive inside. Okay, at the top of my kit, I've got two clamps here, the two types of grip clamps. Uh, this one is the Supervisor from Kupo, uh, but you may also know it as a Mathalini or a Cardellini clamp, uh, and this one is called a Super Clamp or AKA a Mafer, AKA a Mafer, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, effectively, we use both of these in a very similar fashion. They are for rigging lights predominantly above the scene where you don't want to see a stand, for example. Uh, but we have a whole bunch of other uses for these. This works really, really fast. This is if you, got, you know, time is money, you want to work with these guys. Um, this kind of has a few other uses. The great thing about the super clamp is that the pin comes out uh, and then you can rig that pin uh, hole to just about anything. So you can do a whole bunch of other things with this as well. It just takes a little longer to rig and uh, has a couple other sort of advantages or disadvantages over the other clamp. Okay, next up is my tape stringer. Now it's a little empty right now because I did a bunch of jobs earlier and I haven't had a chance to refill this yet. But basically, you just want a bunch of different types of spike tape. Uh, you want to have a black paper tape and this is probably the most useful tape you're going to use in video or film production. Uh, the reason you use paper tape is basically black painter's tape is that it doesn't rip the paint off walls. Do not use gaff tape on walls and it's remarkably strong. I can hang up black solids with this. I can do just about everything blackout, uh, all types of different light leaks with it. So it's super, super useful. I always have about five or six in my closet ready to go at any time. I've got double sided tape. Um, I've got electrical tape. Usually I have every sort of color of the rainbow for electrical tape for marking all different types of electrical stuff. Um, so super useful. Now a lot of people will just use a rope with a clip on it or they just tie the rope. I really like to use this one inch webbing that I've gone and just gotten some buckles at an outdoor store. Um, so that allows me to sort of take the tapes on and off uh, really quickly. So moving on. Next up is my stringer of pony clips. Now I have a lot more of these. They're just in a box right now. But typically I have about 12 to 14 that come with me in my kit, ranging from size one to size two. I don't use size three very much, so I have a couple of those that just live in my closet. But on most jobs, uh, all my number ones will come with me and probably about seven or eight of my number twos will come with me. And then I just got a locking carabine on here for using for whatever I want or just a clip to a stand so that these can hang uh, if I want to clip it to anything. Moving on. Gloves. Lights are hot, stands are pinchy. Always have gloves. Next up is my anchor strap. Now, this may be familiar to you if you've ever tied a boat onto a car. Uh, it's just one inch webbing that has got like a little uh, ratchet end to it. And typically I use these for building menace arms, which is a big boomed arm out where we put light fixtures and all sorts of other things on, but predominantly light fixtures. Uh, so this is uh, sort of a counter uh, rigging for that. So I have a bunch of these in here, but I'll also use them for rigging just about anything else uh, that needs some type of secure rigging. So be really neat about it. Okay, cube taps. Uh, you'll get these in any hardware store. Uh, they're basically like a mini power bar. Uh, I have these in all of my kits kind of everywhere. So I've got three in here right now. Uh, I've got more in my practical kit. I've got another one on my utility belt. Uh, I kind of got them everywhere. You can never have enough cube taps. Always have lots of cube taps. Measuring tape in both metric and Imperial. Clothes pegs. And make sure they're not cheap, garbagey little clothes pegs. Make sure that they're really, really robust because you're going to be using them to clip on gels to light fixtures. So have lots of these uh, on you at all times. Secretary clips. Uh, similar use to clothes pegs. Um, just use them differently at different times. Zip ties. Half inch webbing with some carabiners. Uh, if you want to see a really cool use for these, check out the live stream that we did with uh, cinematographer and director Go Irimoto and how he uses this when he travels. Um, but I use this for all sorts of reasons on set, rigging, safety, all that kind of thing. Always having a bunch of carabiners on you and some webbing, super, super handy. Another fun little piece of rigging, this is basically just a baby pin converter. Um, so it takes a solid baby pin and turns it into sort of a swivel. Um, and this was in originally intended as a product that goes with the versatile light system with LED Go. But uh, I find I use it for a ton of other things, so I find it super handy. It's just nice to have one of these in your kit. And you, they are a standalone product, I think, so you can't buy just this on its own. A persuader. You always need a persuader. Trust me. You don't think you're going to need it, but you're going to need it. 
Next up is Cinefoil. This is also known as black wrap and it does what the name suggests it does. You wrap it around things and because it's a matte black, it is going to prevent light spill. So a lot of lights will kind of spill light in every direction from all sides of it and you want to protect that so we wrap this around it. If it's uh, if the light fixture is outside, for example, and it starts to drizzle a little bit, uh, we use this to kind of cover the lamp with it as well if we need to as in an emergency. Um, but it has a whole bunch of other uses that are all around just blocking out light. If you're on a budget, you can save this, you can reuse it, and that's what I've done anytime that I've used a lot of it um, and I want to keep it, I just fold it back up and I put all these other scraps sort of in my kit. I have some neutral density gel uh, around me of two different types of uh, strength and this is just to bring light levels down in small quantities so if I don't want to put a dimmer on a light or I can't put a dimmer on a light and I can't change the bulb uh, I can wrap this into the light fixture as well and bring that practical light value down um, so it doesn't blow out on camera uh, and a few other small little uses. I always just like to have a little bit in my kit for that reason. Last but not least I have some sash. Now normally I have a lot more sash than this. Same sort of deal. Did a lot of jobs, ran out a lot of it. Um, but there's two different densities or two different uh, thicknesses, diameters that I go with. Um, and this is the thinner one, then I have a thicker one as well. And we use this again for all sorts of types of rigging, for uh, replacing sash on um, cloth and all that sort of stuff. So very, very handy to have. Have a, you know, a, a bundle of it in your kit if you can. Um, you'll find you're using it quite often. Before we go on, there are two things that normally live in my kit but weren't in my kit because they were in another bag and I forgot, but I I did want to mention. Uh, number one is going to be an Allen key set of varying sizes from super tiny to super big. Uh, and then last but not least, you have a tennis ball with a hole cut into it. Uh, and the reason you have one of these, or many of these, is that if there's a stand or something sharp jetting out and you want someone to poke their eye out, take the sharp thing, put the tennis ball on, they both see it and they don't poke their eye out. So win-win. Moving on. And so that's about it that goes inside my bag. Now let's take a look at the stuff I use when it comes to futzing with my camera. When it comes to all the little bits and pieces that you need for your camera kit, now in the past I've gone with a little sort of fishing tackle box. I've seen people as well use sort of like nut and bolts sort of kits from hardware stores. First camera assistants will have these really intricate boxes that have just about everything you need in them. I don't do any work as a first camera assistant uh, so uh, I don't need anything that intricate and what I found was the fishing tackle box is just sort of like didn't fit anywhere. It was too big for some places and too small that I'd lose it or kick it or over. Um, it was never handy when I needed it. And I got to give credit to Josh O from the YouTube channel Make Art Now. Uh, he did a video on this device uh, and it's really been a godsend for me. Basically it is a jewelry case that you can get on Amazon or eBay or whatever um, and it fits all my little GAC pieces inside uh, double-sided. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown and the cool thing is I can hang it. So I can hang it from a uh, tripod if I need to or from a stand. Uh, so super handy that way. Um, and then it all seals up. So uh, I've got some small rig adapter kits here. We sell that at Viztech. These are super, super handy. Always have a ton of these adapters on you. Quarter 20, uh, so male to male, quarter 20 to 3 8 16 3 8 16 to 3 8 16 uh, female to male, um, female to female, that kind of thing. Uh, little twist ties in here. I've got uh, bongo ties, super, super useful. Allen keys. Then you see this jumble. Uh, you wouldn't think that you would use a lot of these things, but I find that uh, having washers, uh, wing nuts, screws of both 3 8 16 and uh, quarter 20 of, of course, uh, all of that helps me immensely with rigging stuff. On the back side, I have Velcro. Always have double-sided Velcro of different sizes. I've got a P-tap or D-tap splitter, so if I'm uh, using multiple devices off of one brick battery, then I can uh, do, use a splitter there. And then these have yet to be used for something. Eventually, I'll put something in there. The last thing I want to show you guys is a bit of a bonus. It is something that I bring on every job, but I just throw it into my backpack, and it just is all the stuff that sort of stays outside that kit because it is my grip and electric tool belt. Um, so this is the belt that I wear when I'm doing any crew work. Uh, and so there's some things on here that I always use you know, that would normally live in my bag, but it's just more convenient if it just stays on here. Uh, so I'm gonna just take you through my tool belt. Uh, this is one uh, that is pre-made for this. It's got a nice little buckle, you can adjust it. Um, and then we've got sort of a, a tool pouch here, a very small one that holds my wrench and my X-Acto knife. 
And then sometimes it also holds a marker, uh, which has gone missing. Uh, then we have my Leatherman multi-tool. I use this a ton. It has, you know, just about everything you're going to need as far as a multi-tool is concerned on it. Uh, then I've got some sash that hangs here where typically I'll have a whole string of these clothes pegs that will kind of sit on there like that. Uh, then I've got my work gloves. Make sure you get really, really good work gloves. Uh, don't get cheap ones. They'll die really, really fast. So I've got some good Petzl ones here. They, these are designed effectively for rope work and rigging so they last a really long time. Then I've got this tape stringer on here that has my most essentials on it. So I've got that high-vis tape that I talked about. I've got some just regular spike tape on here and then of course I've got my black paper tape. Sometimes I'll also have one roll of gaff tape on here as well but these are the predominant ones I use most of the time. Then, of course, when I'm doing electric and gaffing work or if I'm doing DP work, I always have my light meter on me. This is my favorite light meter. It's amazing. It is the Sekonic uh, Lightmaster Pro L478DR. It is awesome. Next up is my flashlight. And another thing I didn't mention uh, that's normally in my kit but uh, wasn't because I was using it for something else uh, is my headlamp. Uh, so having a really, really good headlamp is amazing because at the end of the day, especially if you're wrapping at night and you've got to clean up and find things in the dark, or in a dark studio, you need a headlamp and oftentimes you need your hands free. So having just a flashlight isn't good enough. Have both a flashlight and a headlamp. And the last thing on my belt are cube tops. Remember what I said, you can never have too many cube taps. We also have a circuit checker on here and that means that anytime you're plugging in a lamp and it's not working, you can quickly find out is the circuit even working? Is there any power going to it at all? And that's super handy to have as well. Uh, if you want to hang it on something like I've done here, uh, I've just taken a secretary clip and taken off the little black pinchy part and then the tabs will fit into the circles within the uh, Edison plug right there. So super handy way to just hang them on your belt. Uh, and that's about it guys. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, not everything in my kit is going to work for you or you'll need. Uh, this is just sort of a general overlook. If you're using something in your kit that you think would be great to share with everyone, please comment in the comment section below. I'd love to find out what you have and I'd love to add it maybe to my kit as well. Uh, and as always guys, please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'd love to have you as part of our community here at VizTech and find us on all the social media pages. But for today, that is it. I am out. Peace. Right? Right? Bam, I'm done. You guys can make all the noise you want now.